It's the highest grade. Rest in God, because you know what we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but principalities who are stopping us from achieving. Experience deliverance and God's wonders. Encounter the move of God. The Lord called me to remind you that He started the work in you. He gave you the vision. He gave it to you. It was God. Oh, look at the clouds and keep going. Tell yourself, I will finish. It shall be fruitful. It shall be prosperous. Somebody shout, I will finish. Over to our lovely Dr. Sophia Martin, my mama, welcome you, Pastor. Today's Dean Pentecostal Sunday. I'm going to ask us to rise to our feet. Amen. Praise be to God. And if God has been any good to you, if the Holy Spirit has been your rock, if the Holy Spirit has been your comforter, if the Holy Spirit has been your shield, if the Holy Spirit has been your hiding place, I want us to lift our voices. Come on, somebody, clap those hands and let us acknowledge the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on, everybody, give him a shout of praise. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Our God is a good God. Amen. He sent the comforter among us. Come on. Let us just lift up holy hands. Glory be to God. Lift your voices everywhere you are. Come on, somebody. Praise be to God. The Holy Spirit is with us. Amen. Glory be to God. The Father said, I will send. Come on, somebody. I will send a comforter. Glory be to God. The one who will teach you all things. Come on, somebody. Open your mouth. I don't know. Maybe he hasn't done anything for you. Maybe he's not your favorite musician playing today. Come on, somebody. But God is in our midst. Come on, somebody. Just wave your hands and give him praise. Glory be to God. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. The Spirit of God is indeed with us. Amen. He's among us. Praise be to God. You may be seated at this moment. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I want to take the opportunity to welcome those first time visitors that is in our midst. I'm going to ask my dear friend to stand. Glory to God. And is there any other first time visitor? Oh, yes. Just keep standing. Come on. Let us put our hands together. For two dear young men, amen, praise be to God, hallelujah. And what's your name again? I'm so sorry. Remind me of your name? Ger Geran, praise God. And that's Sister Janitha's son, amen. Put your hands together for him coming to us for the very first time, amen, praise God. And to my dear friend, Kamora, praise God. Stand with me, man of God, praise the Lord, amen, and just welcome. Um, thank you for coming. Amen. Praise God. Getting married very soon. Come check out with church. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. But God is good. Praise be to God. Amen. God is a wonderful God. Um, amen. And also want to take time to welcome my dear friend, Pastor Leonie Laird. Amen. Can you rise to your feet and so that ETWMC can make you welcome. Praise God. Come on, everybody, just make her welcome. Amen. We give God thanks for you and we honor you. Praise God. Every third time, fourth time, fifth time visitor, we will make space to welcome you as well. And to our regular members of ETWMC, I was thinking last night, going to my bed and waking up this morning, praise be to God, of those, amen, who started and who is still here. I'm going to ask all of you just to stand to your feet, all the members. Come on, just stand to your feet, amen, and give yourself a clap offering. Come on. You are, you are still here, amen. If you're a member of ETWMC, I'm going to ask you to stand, amen. Praise God, and put your hands together for yourself. Come on, you have done well. 
to come time after time. We honor those who are not here today. A lot of persons are absent, but nonetheless, give the Lord a praise for yourself. Amen? Praise God. God has been very, 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 very good to us, and we want to give God thanks. Praise God. At the ending of June, thereabouts, we're going to be having our hands of fellowship and welcome those new members who have who have indicated that they want to be part of this ministry. So at the ending of June, we're going to be looking to have our graduation ceremony as well for those who have graduated from the Bible Institution and also from those new members who are coming in. Just know that we give God thanks for you and we honor you. Praise God. We have a baby to be blessed, but we're going to wait a little bit. Amen. We're going to want to hear from our dear speaker on today. Praise be to God. Amen. Glory to God. Um, none other than um, a woman of God who have become my sister. Amen. Praise God. And a dear friend of mine. Amen, somebody. Praise be to God. We want to hear. And then everything else we will look at afterwards. Amen. Please do not kill her. Amen. Do not judge her. <laughs> We're just going to cheer her on. Praise be to God. She was she was frightened. I am I going to be preaching? I said, yes, you are. You're going to be sharing the word with us. Amen. While you're still here in Canada. Amen. Praise God. And so we want to make welcome for the very, very, very first time. Amen. Oh, she's not ready yet. Amen. Oh, she's not ready yet. We're going to ask Bishop Rodney to come and greet us while he's still here with us. His time is running down. He'll be leaving in another week. Amen. Back to Jamaica. Praise be to God. Amen. And so we're going to ask him to come and just greet us and welcome us at this time. Bishop Rodney. Amen. Amen. We serve a very big God, and I am truly appreciative of him. I, as I sat there, you know, a little thought came to my mind. What a thing when your sister become your mother. But it has been a very good time here, and I thank God for the, the miracle. I had no idea that I would be the evidence, but um, I am so appreciative and thankful to him for the journey he has brought me through. And sometimes when I get some of the you know, anecdotal information from Pastor Sophia, Sister Corona, Elder, and um, you know, I hear some of the things that went on, I am like, this is nothing but a miracle. And so what I've done, I've started writing the book, um, So Where's the Evidence? And hopefully, if my publisher works well with me, it should be out before the end of this month, right? I sent to him a book just last um, Thursday, I think it was. Um, giving Up is Not an Option, so that should be out by the end of this week. So we're, we're truly thankful to God. Um, Elder Stanbury and his family really welcomed me, and um, I am truly appreciative. Got a sumptuous breakfast this morning, you know. Sorry for those who woke late and missed it. <laughs> but um, it has been a great time. You guys are a great lot. Um, one of the things I keep telling people is that there is a strong community of Christians in Canada. Um, and everybody, there's so much love that is heaped upon you, so much prayers. Um, I, I know the scare, but I also know the triumph, right? So we're looking at both sides of the coin. And um, believe it or not, the speaker you're going to hear this morning, I have never sat in a service and heard the speaker preach. So it's going to be a first time for me also. And I had to come all the way to Canada for this to happen. <laughs> all right. So big God bless you to you all. Continue praying. Um, we are, we're literally, I'm, I'm so glad I'm not in the hospital, right? Trust me on that. Trust me on that. I'm very happy. And that the, I rejoice so much when the IVs came out. And um, you know that this was it. I'm leaving this place and I'm never ever coming back here. Because when God delivers you out of something, you don't get entangled back into it. All right? So God bless you richly. And um, I, you have a special place in my heart. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us just give God, give God a round of praise on that one. Amen. Come on, let us give God a round of praise on that one. God has been very good to us. Amen, somebody. 
praise be to God. So for the very first time at ETWMC, amen, praise God. I call her my dear sister, amen, Lady Rodney. Praise the name of the Lord, she'll be sharing the word with us. Let's make her welcome. Let's give the Lord the highest praise. Let's give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. I must greet our dear, my dear, pastor, friend, sister, the Reverend Dr. Sonia Martin in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I must also greet Pastor Terry, Pastor Stacy. Sorry if I am reading your names, I just want to make sure I have it correctly. Um, Pastor Davia. Pastor Richard, Elder Stanbury, his gorgeous wife and household, and the people of God, I greet you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Isn't he worthy to be praised? Hallelujah. We heard today that um, today is Pentecost Sunday. So we know from even before we got here that the Holy Spirit is here. Amen. Hallelujah. He's here and he's present among us and he's here to heal, deliver, and set free. If you believe that, say amen. amen. He is here to heal, deliver, and set free. I know it in my spirit. I feel it deep down in my spirit that somebody is here at the right place and at the right time hallelujah to be healed of the spirit of the living God hallelujah let me hear you say hallelujah do you believe that this morning hallelujah and so for my topic is your time has come your time has come if you believe that I want you to say it with me my time has come let me hear you say that Amen. Your time has come. And um, as the scripture was read earlier, we see where Jesus returned. I, I like the New Living Translation version, verse 1 that says, Jesus returned to Jerusalem. And when I read that scripture, it struck a chord in my spirit that we know that Jesus is intentional. We know that the Holy Spirit is intentional. We know that he's here. He does nothing out of chance. He does nothing out of mere coincidence. But he's in, in, he is deliberate. He is intentional. And he's strategic. And so when the scripture says Jesus returned to Jerusalem, he came, he went back there for a purpose. Amen. He went back for a purpose. The scripture said he went to observe the feast that was about to go on but I think it was more than that amen? amen he is the omniscient God he is the omnipotent God we know that Saint John it speaks about the deity of Christ the Godhood of Christ the Godhood of Jesus Christ and we know that God is omniscient he is omnipotent he is omnipresent he's all-knowing and so he went back there for a specific purpose. And could it be this morning that he came here this morning for you? Amen. Could it be this morning that he came here specifically for you, to meet you at the point of your need? Amen. I believe so. Hallelujah. So there Jesus being God... While he was on earth, as I said before, he was omnipotent. He still is. He's all-powerful. He's all-knowing. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at every time. And he's here this morning or this afternoon. Amen. Yes, this afternoon. And so he's intentional. He orchestrates time. He plots seasons. He controls our destiny. And I really believe this morning that destiny is meeting time in this house. Hallelujah. I really do believe that. I think nothing is coincidental. It is not coincidental that I'm in Canada. Two months ago, I could not tell you that I will be here. 
I could not tell you that I would be visiting the Mississauga Hospital every day for over two weeks. I couldn't tell you that my husband would have suffered a, so a stroke. I could not tell you that I would have left my daughter in Jamaica, the youngest, for two, roughly two months. But God is intentional. God is intentional. And I give him all the praise and glory this morning. I can tell you that I was speaking to somebody the other day and she was saying, I wish God did not do it that way. I, got, I wish God did not have to operate that way. But when I see the goodness of God, when I see how marvelous he has orchestrated things and people and times and situation, I said, to be quite honest, I would not have it any other way. Amen. Hallelujah. I would not have it any other way because God is perfect in all his ways. He's perfect in what he does. He knows the end from the beginning and he always ends well. Hallelujah. He always ends well and I give him praise and glory. We know he does not take us halfway to leave us. He does not take us halfway to leave us confused and helpless and hopeless. And I'm saying this morning, he did not take you here this morning to leave, for you to leave the way you came in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He did not do that. I really do so believe so. <clears throat> From the depths of my heart, God never misses a beat. Amen. He never misses a beat. He is an intentional God. And so we see where Jesus went back to Jerusalem and he went to the pool of Bethesda. He went back on an assignment. He went back with a specific purpose in mind. He went back with intent. He returned with a specific mission to accomplish. He came back for the paralytic man. Are you paralyzed this morning? Are you paralyzed by fear? Are you paralyzed by sickness? Are you paralyzed by disease? Are you paralyzed by your situation? Jesus is here for you. The Holy Spirit is right here, right now, to meet you at the point of your need. Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let us take a look at the paralytic man. He was sick. He had a chronic illness. His illness prevented his movements. If he had dreams, visions of a career, this debilitating condition barred him from achieving that or so it seemed for 38 years he was stagnated in one place for 38 years he was dependent on somebody else for 38 years he was frustrated for 38 years he had unfulfilled dreams for 38 years he might have been depressed he might have been oppressed for 38 years, he was living day by day in his pain, in his, in his debilitating condition. He might have even got comfortable in the situation that he was in. Maybe he was saying, for 30 years, I don't see where God is, where I'm, I am going to be healed anymore. 38 years, day in, day out, I might as well live that way. He might have almost given up hope, but the fact that he was at the pool of Bethesda at that time. And the fact that he was there, I believe that God drew him there. I don't know if he was there every day for 38 years, but I know he was there at that point in time. Hallelujah. His time had come. He might not have known that, but his time had come. And I want to tell us this morning, I want to tell somebody this morning that your time has come. Hallelujah. It does not matter how long you've been in this situation. It doesn't matter how grave your situation is. It doesn't matter how deep a hole you have dug for yourself. It doesn't matter if you blame yourself. It doesn't matter if you blamed your parents. Because, you know, in those days, if somebody got ill, they would have said, it's either myself or my parents who did sin. 
it doesn't matter how you got there or got or you get here at this time. The time has come for you to be delivered from your situation. Hallelujah. The time has come for you be, to be delivered from your situation. And I'm here to announce this morning that there is a balm in Gilead right here, right now to heal you of your diseases, to heal the soul. Hallelujah. To provide deliverance, to provide relief. Hallelujah. He is here right now and your time has come. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So that was the paralytic man. Maybe he was not even qualified for healing based on his situation. He was, he couldn't move, he couldn't walk. To get into the pool, you had to be able to move. And he could not move. You know, last night as I was looking over, I remembered there was a time, probably about 17 or so years ago, when I decided that, my Christian life needed to take another level, need to go up a notch. And I, want, and I saw where I wanted to be. I saw where I wanted to go. And I felt I could not get there. I got desperate. I prayed so many times. I fasted so many times. I did all that I thought I needed to do. I sowed seeds. I sowed all sorts of seeds. And I did what I thought I needed to do. But I just couldn't get there. And I'm thinking about that man. He could not walk, but he could see. He knew where he wanted to go, but he just could not get there. Is anyone here today with that situation. You know you want to get out of this. You know you want to be productive. You know you want to have a career. You know you want to advance. You know you want to be healed, but you cannot seem to get there. Your time has come this morning. And so I remembered, I prayed, and I fasted. I sought counseling. And I thought, to my, at one stage I said to myself, I used to pray some long prayers, giving God everything I knew and all that I did not know. And I said to myself, I remember one night I said, God, I don't have anything else to say because I've said it all. I'm just going to thank you because I cannot do it anymore. But there came a time when he revealed himself to me in such a powerful way. He revealed He almost literally stepped into my room. And his presence was so powerful, I couldn't even open my mouth. It was so real. It could not have been more real if he had stepped in with a physical body. That's how present he was and powerful in that room. And from then on, my Christian life, my prayer life, my relationship with God, my witness took another turn another upward turn. And I'm saying the time had come that evening. I tried to do it myself. I couldn't. But he came when I was at my lowest point. He came. He came into that room. And I'm telling you this morning, he's here in the room for somebody. Amen. Sometimes your faith has wavered. Sometimes it seems as if all is lost. But that's when he walks in. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So that was that man. He was, he was, I don't know if he extended any faith in God. But Jesus came to him and said, would you be made whole? But before we go on further, I want us to look at Bethesda. Because I think there's something important we need to know about Bethesda. The place. You know, the more I read the text the more I realized that Bethesda was not necessarily the place that people thought it was. Bethesda, I mean, studies would show, sources would reveal that that, that story surrounding Bethesda was born out of a myth, out of a legend of pagan, pagan worship. 
And so Bethesda was, was not necessarily, and as I said before, the more I read it, it dawned on me that Bethesda was not necessarily the place where God dwells. The scripture says an angel. I don't know what angel it was. As I said before, it could have been a myth because there are studies that show that. But if you look at Bethesda, if you, and if you look at the nature of God, God meets everyone everywhere. God meets you at the point of your need. He is merciful. He is kind. And if you have a need and you speak to him, he will deliver. Bethesda didn't provide that. Bethesda was a first come, first serve basis. If you were not strong enough to jump in the water, or if you did not have a network of people to get you in the water, or if you didn't have connections to get you at the edge of the water, so that when the angel, as the story goes, troubled the water, you could get in, you had not a chance. That paralytic man, based on his explanation, he had nobody to take him there. He did not have a chance. That's not the God I serve. That's not the nature of the God I serve. The nature of the God I serve, if you seek him, and you seek him with all your heart, says the scriptures, you will find him. And he will be found by you, says the scriptures. He will find you. He will meet you at the point of your need. Hallelujah. So that was Bethesda. It was a first come, only served basis. It was the first one who jumped in. So if you jumped in second, you did not stand a chance. That's not the God I serve. It was a rat race at the pool of Bethesda. It was a rat race. But here comes Jesus that day. The living water. The bread of life. Jehovah Rapha in the flesh. He came and he saw that this man was paralytic for 38 years. He knew, he knew him. He was God. He knew him. From before he was born, he knew that he would have been at that pool that day. He knew that he would have been there he would have been ill for 38 years, yet Jesus walked by everyone else. He walked by the strong. In fact, at Bethesda, you know, you had to be, the more sick you are, the less likelihood of you getting healed. Because you had to get down in the water first. Here is this man. He was possibly, I don't know how many paralytics was there. But there he was, and he came, they brought him there, and maybe he thought, this is going to be another day. I hope somebody comes to get me so I can go home after all of this. But here comes Jesus. He walked past everybody else. He walked past the crowds of sick. He walked past everything else, and he came and located that man. Hallelujah. Jesus demolished every system of Bethesda that day. He demolished every principle of Bethesda that day. He demolished everything, the standards and systems of this world. That's why it's important, you know, that we have to find our deliverance from the source. We have to be careful where we go seeking our deliverance. You know, it's not everything that we hear. Every, as I would say in Jamaica, every pan that is knocking, you go searching. You hear that there's a man down there healing and you say, yes, I need to get there. We have to be careful. We need to know the God we serve. We need to know the nature of the God we serve. We need to know the word of God. Hallelujah. But we should also know that Jesus has a way of meeting people at the point of their need. Even though that man went to Bethesda seeking healing from a water, Jesus bypassed that and delivered him. And so that's the merciful God we, we know. That's the merciful God we have. And so if you are here today looking for a formula, looking for somebody to say a few words over you, throw a little water and oil mixed together and say a few words over your head, 
Seek instead Jesus, the living water. Hallelujah. Seek instead Jesus, the Rapha, Jehovah Rapha. He was Jehovah Rapha in the flesh. Hallelujah. And when he heals, when he makes whole, it is a, a one-time thing. He, does, he doesn't do a partial job. But we have to obey him. Hallelujah. He does it whole, comprehensively, through and through and thoroughly. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's just one thing I think I needed to plug right there. That we have to be careful where we go for our deliverance. And I believe right here is the right place at the right time. Hallelujah. You know, when I was looking at this word, and I was looking at all the circumstances and all the things that happened Why? I was in Canada, and I thought to myself, in fact, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, you are right here at the right time when you need to be. I am right here in this service in Empower to Win Ministries Canada today at the right time. The first Sunday I came here, I should tell you this, that when I decided that I needed to be here in Canada, I... Did not take, I did not make any provisions to be in church. All I wanted to do was to go to the hospital, hold my husband's hand every day, and make sure that he comes out alive. That, that's my, that was my sole intention. And so I did not make any provisions to come to church. You know, that wasn't what's on my mind. But Jesus, he's a master strategist. Hallelujah. He's a master strategist. I remember when Pastor Sophia asked me, I said, me? No. I remember the first time you suggested it, Pastor, and I said, nope. Nope. I'm here on a different mission. Not in so many words, but that's what I said. I'm here. Sometimes a soldier needs to just relax and and let others, you know, go forward. Sometimes you're so embattled, you just need to relax and let the stronger ones do whatever is needed. Here I am several Sundays later. So let me tell you this. For those who are here today, and the Holy Spirit ministered to me, it was the last, could have been Wednesday, while I was waiting the Holy Spirit ministered to me and said, this church right here, right now, is meeting with its destiny. Right here, right now. Hallelujah. It's where time meets destiny. I could tell you stories of what has happened since I'm here. I did not share it with you, Pastor, but it was after... Was it after Bible study on Wednesday? I came to you and told you that my, my boss offered me a promotion. Yes. He offered, she offered me a promotion. And while I was looking at the story, the man, the, the man with the, the, who was paralytic for 38 years, he was so disenchanted. Maybe he did not think he could ever walk. He probably thought he would never be a functioning person of society. I remember when I knew that this position was coming up and they had announced that they are going to advertise it outside of the, outside of the, of the, of the university. And I thought to myself, I am cool with that. That, that position is too demanding. But when the, my boss, she called me, it's like a boldness rose up inside of me. And I said, yes, she asked me, are you interested? I said, yes, I am interested. And I said it with, with such boldness that it surprised me. So even now, many years after, he's still working on me to understand that he's God and he can do anything. And when the right time comes, I can rise and be whatever he wants me to be. 
We are not limited by our circumstances, brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter how long you have been in this situation. It doesn't matter how long you feel stagnated. It doesn't matter how long you have been lying on the roadside. Everybody passing you. Everybody getting ahead until you think, am I going to get ahead? Hallelujah. I don't care how long the time has come when you are going to rise. Hallelujah. The time has come when you are going to excel. Hallelujah. The time has come when you are going to be delivered. You are going to be healed and set free. Your time has come. Will you be made whole today? Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is asking somebody, will you be made whole today? Hallelujah. It doesn't matter who has written you off. It doesn't matter if you had written yourself off. You know, some people will come to church because it's a thing to do. And they will come because they don't want it to look bad. But deep inside, they're feeling desperate. They're feeling destitute and say, this is another Sunday. I'll come. I'll worship. I'll praise. I'll show a good face. I'll jump and say hallelujah. Speak a few tongues and, you know, everything is fine. And then I go home to my mess. Today is the beginning of the rest of your life. Hallelujah. Today is the 39th year of your life. Hallelujah. I'm declaring it to somebody today. Hallelujah. Today is the rest of your life. It's the beginning of the rest of your life. Your time has come. Your time has come. Hallelujah. I hope you understand that. I hope you get that in your spirit. Hallelujah. I hope I'm communicating that for you to understand because God is here. God is in this house and is here to meet you at the point of your need. Hallelujah. Pastor, God is here. God is with you. And this ministry is going to see leaps and bounds. It is, it's unfathomable. I cannot explain how I feel in my spirit. And it's not just because I'm standing here, believe me. I saw that and I sensed that even before I thought I would ever speak at this pulpit this morning. Amen. Believe what the Holy Spirit is saying to his church. Hallelujah. Believe the word. And so I'm saying to somebody this morning that as we celebrate Pentecost, as we decide to remember what Jesus did on Calvary's cross. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. Hallelujah. Do you want to be made whole today? He's here to meet you at the point of your need. And so this movement, this church, this ministry, it's not just a magic formula. You have to obey God. You have to believe him. You have to obey him. That man, you know, when Jesus said, take up your bed and walk. If he did not believe the word, he would not try. He would not try. So believe. And when you look at the word believe, when you look at the Hebrew, the Hebrew definition of things, these words, all these verbs, they are active. Believe is not just a head knowledge. When you believe, you're going to trust and you are going to obey. And so it's important that as you hear the word of God today, believe. I don't know if my husband told you his testimony about a time when he was struggling with asthma. You told. I'll tell it anyway. It's my husband, I'm going to tell it. But what struck me, he said, when he got home, he expected a little bit of showdown, you know, because he's the minister and all, and he was famous and all of that. This is Valentine Rodney here. But the, the minister said, what did he say? He just touched him and said, in the name of Jesus. And he was a little bit disappointed. But he went home and said, what if I believe? I'm not here to touch anybody. Jesus did not have to touch the paralytic man. There are other people that Jesus touched. He made spittle and, and 
apply it but sometimes you just have to hear the word and act upon it I am telling you today act on the word believe in the word of God and you shall be made whole your time has come do you want to be made well hallelujah God bless you of your life. You're 39 years. You're 39 years of deliverance and of breakthrough and it has come. Amen? Amen. Do you believe? Amen. Do you believe? Amen. amen. If you believe, say aloud, amen. amen. Come on, if you believe, say aloud, amen. 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 I believe. Amen. Praise be to God. And it confirms a dream that I got this morning. That I was in a big room with a lot of people. And like immediately, like a spirit came in the room and started to ad make major adjustment to the people. And uh, some feet were like a size nine. And I literally saw when the spirit comes in and cut down a feet to size eight. I heard it. This is a size eight. And some were tall and it was just cutting them down to size. Like a spirit just moved into the room. It was altering, like cutting people to sizes and everybody just went shuffle up and line up and then the spirit left. God is with us. Amen. God is with us. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Is there one before I christen that baby? Is there one person today that by faith you want to stand up so that we can pray with you? You're believing God for something. It has been years. It has been months and it's like a cycle, but you believe that today, that cycle, you really want that cycle to be broken. I'm going to ask you to stand with me. Your Bethsaida is 255 Rutherford Road, South Unit 107. Your Bethsaida, amen, praise be to God. You're in your pool. You're standing at the edge of your pool this morning. Praise be to God. And the word has come. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm really grateful to God. Amen. That the word has come to heal our hearts. Amen. To deliver you completely out of where you are. So your 38 years have come to an end. And your 39 years of blessings and favor has begun. You're standing. told that I grew up with amen some things you adopt some things you know you don't need to adopt it our bishop back home used to say to us um, the person who preach is the one who should pray for the people so I'm not gonna call anybody else to pray but I'm gonna ask minister to come back and to pray one of the things she said she don't need to touch Jesus didn't touch but he spoke the word and the people believed. Amen. If you have faith to believe it, you will receive it. Amen. Do not go back where you're coming from. Amen. It's your pool of blessings. You're standing at the brink. Glory to God. And the angel of the Lord is here to heal you completely of everything that you need. Amen. 
bow your hearts with me and minister is going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we're here before you once again. God, we give you praise and glory. We tell you thanks for the words that you have spoken into the hearts, into the spirits of your people today. And Father, we tell you thanks for the responses to your word. Hallelujah. We know it's your spirit that draws people unto yourself. And we tell you thanks, God, for those who have stood and is responding and is obeying the word of the Lord today. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you meet everyone standing here at the point of their need. Hallelujah. In fact, you have called them to this place and we know God that you are ready and waiting to bless, to heal and to do good. Oh God, we tell you thanks for the receptive hearts. We tell you thanks for the fertile soil. Oh mighty God that you have provided here at Empower to Win Ministries. Hallelujah. And so I pray right now by your Holy Spirit that you walk from chair to chair and that you touch heal and deliver hallelujah set free in this place let your holy spirit descend into the realities of your people right now and set your people free hallelujah set your people free oh god you know the different needs that are here today you know the sick you know that the, you know those who are stuck you know that those who are desperate and destitute, you know that those who need a better career, you know all things, God, you know the needs of your people. I pray, Almighty God, that you'll speak to them in no uncertain terms. Reveal yourself to your people, Almighty God, and let your people experience the supernatural power of the living God at work in their lives. Oh God, let today be the beginning of the rest of their lives. Hallelujah. Open up their spirits to believe again. Open up their spirits to obey you, God. Hallelujah. Let your people, oh God, receive of your hands today. Hallelujah. While we say thank you. Thank you for hearing the cries of your people. God, for those who need another touch another touch, an encouraging touch. Those who need to get out of situations that have held them captive for years. Hallelujah. We tell you thanks for the liberating power of the Holy Spirit this morning. Heal, deliver and set free. We say thank you Lord. We give you praise and glory. Hallelujah. Mend every broken life. Mend every brokenness. Oh God, clear up every mess. Hallelujah. And let your name be glorified in the lives of your people. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Powerful. You may be seated. Amen. Praise be to God. Powerful. Amen, somebody. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory be to God. Amen. Powerful word. Powerful word. Make sure you believe and make sure you receive. Amen, somebody. Praise be to God. I'm going to ask the mom who is um, christening the baby if the mom and the godparents could come at this time. Well, there are 
privilege to have you here. It's your first time, right? Your first time here? Amen. Praise God. And so we thank God for allowing you to bring your baby to be dedicated on a day like this, on a Pentecost Sunday. We we're expecting the Spirit of God to move to baptize little Kihira. Praise be to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. This day, in our church, we often, you know, do big ceremonies sometimes, not all the times, it depends. Amen. Praise God. But today it is a blessing. When I saw you walked in, something moved on the inside of me. Praise God. And it's very important that as parents that we raise our children in a godly way, what the word of God requires of us to raise our children. I, I felt in my heart to open the door for you to walk in and to hold it until you get in. I mean, it's the same thing that the Lord is saying that the doors are open unto you for you to come in, for you to walk in boldly, for you to make that step unto him today. So today we're offering many things, not only the blessing of Kahira, but we're offering God's blessing upon you as well and, and the Father. Amen. Praise be to God, somebody. Amen. Glory be to God. We, we, we want to encourage you. Praise God. And so that we realize that children are not a mistake. It wasn't buck up. I wasn't prepared. Praise be to God. Yeah, I know I'm reading you quite well. And don't be discouraged. Don't be disappointed. Children are a blessing. Children are a blessing to the parents. And see her as a great blessing. See her that this is God's will for your life. Amen. And see her, the comfort she will bring to you. The joy that she will bring to you in days, in months to come. Glory be to God. Do not be discouraged. Do not be disappointed. Because God knew everything. 
and he knows glory be to God amen he is touched with the feelings of your very infirmity even as you cry God knows your tears your very tears he wants you to understand and he wants you to find peace that he has blessed you with this child find peace in your heart that he has blessed you. Sometimes you may feel like you're standing all alone with her. But the Lord wants you to know that as you stepped in, destiny has met you here. You're at the right place. Glory to God. And you're at the right time. Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Be encouraged today. Because the Lord wants you to know that he has already opened doors for baby Kahira. And you don't have to struggle by yourself. You will never have to suffer by yourself. Because he is with you. And his loving arms surrounds you today. Praise be to God. Somebody give God praise for her. Amen. Give God praise for her. Amen. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. everybody to pray for baby Kahira. Okay, mama. Okay. Father, we give you thanks today for this life. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you again. We honor you. We give you the glory. We give you the praise and the honor. My God. My God, my God, and my Father. We present Kahira Brown before you today. God, it's not coincidence, God. Hallelujah. It's not, oh my God, it's not, why did I wait this long? But God, yes, a destiny has met her and her mother today. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that your loving arms, God Almighty, will be outstretched towards uh, this baby today, oh God. And I want to lift up mommy before you as well, uh, Father. We pray, God, in the name of Jesus uh, that Lord God Almighty, she will know that the intentional God knows everything, hears everything, he is everywhere, and he is he's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. God, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that your power, oh God Almighty, Lord Jesus, glory to God, will be rest upon this child in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. We pray, oh God, we pray, oh God, that as her mother has brought her into the house to be blessed, that it will not be a one day thing, it will not be a one time thing, but God, they will come into the house of God. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. In many, many Sundays, many other days, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for your protective power. Oh God, to rule and reign over this young child in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, almighty God, that you'll continue to provide. You will continue to protect. God, you will continue to order. Oh God, God Almighty, your steps in your word in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God, we speak life over this life. God, we declare that you will not perish. We declare, Almighty God, that you will grow up with the fear of God in her heart. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray, oh God, you will protect her. Oh God, during school, God, we pray you will protect her. Oh God, during her entire life, God, you will help her to choose the right career oh God almighty father the right friends in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth father even at the time oh God of marriage God you will protect you will guide oh God in Jesus mighty name we pray with thanksgiving we pray oh God almighty you'll protect her oh God almighty from robbers from thieves from gunmen from rapists from pedophiles let's be and spirit, God, every spirit that is out there, oh God, that is unlike you, we pray today 
for complete protection over this young child. Come on, believers, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray, oh God, that your name will be echoed in the home. I pray, oh God, that songs of glory to that give glory to God. Oh God, she will hear in Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, take full control of her life today, oh God. Order her heart, order her steps in your word. Father God, we pray today that, oh God, she will be a blessing to society. We pray, oh God, that she will be a blessing to her peers. We pray, oh God Almighty, that Lord, her pathway that you have already been aware of, Almighty God, she will not miss it, Almighty God, but she will walk accordingly to the plans that you have in store for her, oh God. My Lord and my God, remember the parents even now. God, strengthen them. God, let there be unity. God, let there be peace. Lord, let there be agreement in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth among them, O oh God, as the purpose, their whole purpose, O oh God, is to raise this young child, O oh God. God, remember the God parents as well. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, oh God, that their input will be very valuable to this young child, O oh mighty God. Father, cover everyone under your blood. God, seal her, almighty God. Seal her with the blood of Jesus Christ, almighty God. Let not the enemy triumph over this young life, almighty God. We pray for the very home that she lives, that your blood, oh God, oh God almighty, will be very evident inside and outside, almighty God. Father, bless this family. Bless her home, O oh God. Mm. Make the impossible possible. Mm. Let the unknown be known unto them that you are in the midst. And you will never leave them. Neither will you forsake them. Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty. We bless and consecrate, O oh God. Kehira Brown. Father, in the name of the Father. In the name of the Son and in the name of the Holy Spirit, we honor God and we declare as a church that she is blessed. Everybody says she is blessed. She is blessed. Come on, everybody, she is blessed. She is blessed. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit, praise be to God. Amen. Hold her. every sleepless night let your spirit reign and give her sleep give her rest in the mighty name of Jesus Christ every foul and unclean spirit we send them back to the pit of hell in the mighty name of Jesus Father God Almighty take over and take full control God Almighty your deliverance your deliverer is here to deliver you. Your time has come for breakthrough. Your time has come for victory, mother. Your time has come and your steps have been ordered here today. And the Lord wants you to know that you should have no fear, but you, will, you must trust him. Trust him. Trust him. It makes no sense that you go all over looking for peace. But find peace in the God of your salvation. Amen. Stay right there. I'm going to ask you this question as the Lord spoke to my spirit this morning. In the name of Jesus. Praise be to God. And I want you to reply with I do. Or we do because the godparents are here as well. And godparents, we're 
believe in God that you'll play a great role in this child's life. Please, it's very important that you play a great role in this child's life from this day onwards. Amen. Praise be to God. Do you today recognize that baby Kahira Brown is a gift of God, is a gift from God? Do you recognize? Yes, I want you to say we do. I've never done this before, but I was led to do it. Do you recognize that God has blessed you with this child? Do you pledge as parent and godparent with God's fatherly help that you will bring up this child in the discipline and instruction of the Lord? Do you promise to make every reasonable effort with patience and love to build the word of God, the character of Christ, and the joy of the Lord? In baby Kara's life. Do you promise that through God's blessings, that whenever there is a need in this child's life, do you promise that you will be there to support her mother and father? Here the Lord said to you today. Be very intentional about the baby. Be very intentional about this young child. It's not a mistake. It's not an error. But the Lord says that he's the one that placed this young child into both of you. It doesn't matter how many other children is involved in this family. The Lord wants you to know that she's special. His hands are upon this child for good. Know today that she's a special gift unto you. Do you intend to treat her as special as she is? Do you, and do you promise God that you will ensure that she's in the house of the Lord and she knows the word of God? Pastor Terry. Is every for you? And if she's every for your sister, she's every for we all. <laughs> Come on, everybody. We now dedicate. We now dedicate Kehera Jaden, Jaden Brown. Praise God. Normally, would have taken her and give her back to you, but she doesn't want to. <laughs> for five seconds. That's all you're giving me. Okay. 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 Okay, Mama. Okay. Okay. There's Mommy. There is mommy. Come on, everybody. We now dedicate. Come on, church. It is. We, it, listen, she's our family now. Come. We now dedicate. Kehera. Jaden. Brown. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Son. And in the blessed Holy Spirit. We give her back to you. She want to drag off my wig. What has that said? See, she stopped crying. Hi, mommy. Thank God, mother, take her. We believe that Sister Karana there will do a very good job. Amen. Praise be to God. We're going to ask Pastor Terry to present you with a token. We normally do for everybody. Amen. Bless God. On behalf of Empowered Twin Ministry, we just want to say congratulations on the christening of baby Kiara. And I pray that today will be the start of a wonderful journey of faith for yourself, for your children, and for your entire household. God bless you. Amen.
Come on, everybody. Let's welcome our newest member, Kihira Brown. Come on. Let's welcome our newest member to ETWMC, Kihira Brown. Amen. Come on, put your hands together to our newest member. Amen. Praise God. Born May 12. Amen. So which month are we in? April? Oh, we're in May. So our birthday passed on Mother's Day. Amen. Praise God. And so we welcome baby Kihira to Empowered to Win Ministries. Amen. Amen. Praise be to God. There are many more babies to come, don't you? Amen. There are many more babies to come. Amen. Amen. Because we're waiting on, on um, eh? we're waiting on Marana, baby. Come on, Marana, we're waiting on your baby. Praise be to God. Amen. I'm waiting on many more babies to come in the house. Car um, ca <laughs> always a mix up in name, isn't it? Kaya, we're waiting on your baby. Amen. Tasha, we're waiting on your baby. When you get married, we're waiting on many babies in the house. Amen. Praise be to God. Amen. Auntie who? I did not hear, and you did not hear all. I know that's what she wants to say. Yeah. I know that's what she wants to say, Auntie Leslie. But she said something. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. It is offering time. Amen. Praise be to God. It is offering time. It is offering time. Amen. It is offering time. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. We needed to sow a Pentecostal seed today. Amen. Praise be to God. We needed to sow a Pentecostal seed. <laughs> Praise be to God. And so we're going to ask you to give unto the Lord. Amen. Praise be to God. We want our confession of faith to come upon the board if you need um, your envelopes. Not if you need. We want to give your, each person their envelope to write on their envelopes. Praise God. As we ask everybody to give unto the Lord on today. God is a very, very, very good God. Today, many persons have absence. We had a couple calls. Our keyboard is in Jamaica, enjoying the sunshine. Mm -hmm. Our drummer, him out too. Praise be to God, our regular. Everybody is away, a couple of people. Look here, summer is not summer yet. And so we're asking, listen, tell somebody who was missing today to make sure that they're in the house next week. Amen? Even though the sun is shining on the outside. Praise God. We want you all to make much time of the weather, of course. It doesn't last for long. So do as much as you want to do. Amen? But do not be absent from church. Praise be to God. I want you to rise to your feet as we take um, our tithes and offering. For those giving online, you know, um, our e-transfer information. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us just say our confession of faith. Hold your tithes, hold your giving into your hand. Let's hold it up into your hand. Amen. Praise God. And let us just say our confession of faith after, right at this time. Let's say it together after three. One, two, three. meeting all of my needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Praise be to God. I'm just going to ask you to come with your giving. And if you're an e-transfer, it's empowered to win nine at gmail.com. Praise God. Do not write on the envelope that you gave and you did not give online. I think I've bumped into like two envelopes like that where a person said that they gave and, um, online. And then when we um, match it, it wasn't there. Please, if you give, write that you give. Do not write it with the intention to give and did not give it. Praise God. We want you to, if you're writing it on the envelope, make sure if you're writing that you have given it that same day. Amen. Praise be to God. So we're going to ask you to come. Come with your giving. Love, wonderful, wonderful love. The love of God to me. Love, wonderful love. So rich, so pure, so free.
just raise her right hand. No, you know, so quick to sit down on a tired. Donna, you're tired. <laughs> Let us raise our right hand and now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the Father, the full fellowship of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, rest, remain, and abide with us all, both now and forevermore. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. Now you can be seated.